Greetings and welcome to the Spiritual Awareness Journey Program, a virtual spiritual talk platform where the practical applications of all things spiritual in our daily living is shared and discussed by experienced speakers from all walks of life with our special guests who are realized souls called Mahatmas. This hour is brought to you by the Manav Dharam YouTube channel. I am your host, Supriya Koirala. And we are very happy to welcome you from all around the world to spend this next hour with us as we address our 27th episode's topic, Science and Spirituality. As we know, energy is ever-present and we are all familiar with the Big Bang Theory by which scientists say the creation started a magnificent vibrational movement causing an explosion, bringing forth waves of sound, light, and heat, forming particles, manifesting the universe. This similar story we learned about in the holy sacred scriptures, where that essence is referred to as the living word, the primordial vibration, divine source, Param Brahma, Jehovah, and more, from which this whole creation manif manifested. And all scriptures speak of that self-illuminating bright light, brighter than a thousand suns. The questions then are, how can we know? Can all humans experience this? And today, our expert panel, Ms. Shipra Dawar from India, will illustrate many facets of this topic, science and spirituality. And here is where, where our spiritual guest master, Mahatma Vyoma Vaiji, can help us expounding on this spiritual aspect of us humans. It is only we, the spiritual beings embodied in this human temple that have the ability to connect with this true essence, our original spiritual source. As humans, we can learn to meditate and by receiving this spiritual knowledge, we can commune with that infinite eternal divine essence within, with the potential to experience our true self, our, our own light divine, and forging a relationship with our true self, we can start with our own practical spiritual awareness journey. And we, belonging to this one race, the human race, through this conscious practice, knowing who we are, expanding in our spiritual potentials, journeying together as the one race, uniting as the one, may attain our true goal, enlightenment, on a spiritually enlightened world where peace, joy, and bliss will reign. Moving forward, the Spiritual Awareness Journey team wishes to announce that our 45 minutes program will be recorded and will be made available on the Manav Dharam YouTube channel with subtitles afterwards. Our Q&A session will be at the end of the presentation of both our speakers. The chat box will be opened only for your questions about this topic to the speakers. Thank you so much in advance for your questions. Now, we are delighted to introduce our first speaker of the day. We would love to start our spiritual awareness journey program today with our first speaker, Ms. Shipra Dawar. Shipra Dawar is the founder and the CEO of I Will Therapy and Esai Clinic, tech and online mental wellness companies. She is in 100 most impactful healthcare leader, global listing by World Health and Wellness Congress Awards. She's also an influential TEDx speaker, a healthcare entrepreneur, and a motivational speaker as well. Here now, Ms. Shipra Dawar. Greetings to everyone. It's such a blessing to be with all of you and discussing the mergence of two topics that are so close to my heart, science and spirituality. Science is everything that I owe my career to, that I owe my life to. And spirituality is something to which I owe the form that is sitting in front of you and is able to put the words together. I'd like to start by really defining what spirituality is. Spirituality is a feeling that there is a higher purpose, that there is a higher self, a deeper connection, that permeates, that transcends all the differences that we see today. There is a purpose that connects you, me, 
and the inanimate and animate objects in this world. Spirituality tells us that there's more to our life than just going about our daily lives, than just about working, than just about loving, just about living. There's something more to why you and I are born. There's something more to why we are exploring the life today. There's something more to why me, we as a generation would have come across something as a pandemic, uh, you know, or wars. What is that? That question is what spirituality tends to answer, but also tends to ask. And science, on the other hand, is really that makes everything possible. The fact that today I am sitting here in Delhi, talking to many of you from different parts of the world. I know you're from US. I know you're from UK. I know you're from uh, Dubai. Science makes this magic happen, this connection happen. Science makes it possible that today me and you are alive, that we could find not a cure, but a way really to deal this with this virus, which was the vaccination. Science has enabled us to really have the cars, have luxuries, anything that we touch today, anything that we see today, is really a marvel of science. Science and spirituality to me are not really two different topics. I wouldn't even say that they are interlinked. I would say, and this is my humble opinion, and now I have seen life around me flourish. I feel science has come to exist because of spirituality. Because if there was no spirituality, there could have not been science. And if there will not be spirituality, there will be no science. And in the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'd like to bring forth this idea of how science and spirituality are so intertwined that without these two, we human beings are really not living the life that we are bound to live. And when we unleash the magic of the two, that's where the superpower of being the human happens. You and I become the superhumans, the superpower, by realizing how spirituality is the force that really kicks through science. I will try and break that down with you and explain that to you through five O's. I always try to summarize things in the forms of letters and alphabets because then later it's very easy to have a recall around that. Like Supriyaji Supriya was saying, the first O that I have today is of origin. Where have we originated from? Science says it was Big Bang. It was a Big Bang explosion that basically took a single point of dense mass, energy, light, and made it explode and it really expand and cool and really form into atoms and different kinds of galaxies and stars, our planet, Earth, Sun, the whole cosmos. The whole cosmos came from that single point of dense mass of energy and light. That's what science says. If you compare that with what spirituality says, it's the same. We all are flowing in the realm of the same consciousness. Today I speak, I create this sound because I have that same innate consciousness driving me as the consciousness in you, as the consciousness in the stars, as the consciousness in the sun. We are all made of the same stardust. We are all made of the same atoms. Science says that the Big Bang happened and through that Big Bang, this universe that we just cannot fathom, a universe that has gone beyond the realms of what scientists say would be observable universe, a manifestation so profound that it's difficult for the best of scientists to ever really get the, the essence of it, right? And it all started from one point. We are that one point and that's where spirituality is trying to illuminate us, that we can be manifested into the superhumans together if we realize that we are all originating from that same speck 
of energy, that same speck of cosmos light. And once we see ourselves through that connection, there's nothing that seems impossible. There's no happiness that seems so far reaching away from us because we know our limit is limitless. Our potential is really unparalleled. That consciousness is what spirituality talks about so deeply, has been talked about in Bible, has been talked about in Gita, has been talked about in Vedas, has been talked about in Upanishads, has been talked about in Quran. And that's the same consciousness that science is trying to explore. So if you look at the origins of science and spirituality, you would see that it's a cosmic dance of consciousness that has enabled our world to manifest today in the way it is. And, man, and that is the same energy that allows you and me to manifest, to speak, to have dreams, to live our lives, to do good. The origin is really the same. And that's the beauty of it. The next similarity is the next O, and that is observation. Anyone who is a scientist, anyone who works in the field of science knows that science does not create, science observes, science experiments, and science thereby unravels the mysteries that are already there laid out for you. So when Wright brothers looked at how the bird's flight is, they could get the idea of what our modern day planes look like. When we look at what the vision of owl is, that's how we've been able to look at 270 degree kind of vision and we've created it from that. The observation of how the stars move, how the galaxies circulate, how the world around us manifests has given us the power to manifest and imagine about intranet, internet, star links and that kind of imagination has all come from observation, observation of the universe already out there, observation of the universe already dancing in its full glory in front of us. That's the observation that enables science. And that same observation enables spirituality. The observation of how you and I are, the observation of how we interact, the observation of how we, how we feel as human beings, the observation of our sadness, the observation of our pride, the observation of our humility. Science and spirituality rest on the very, very base pillar of observation. We only observe to discover. And that observation has given to us because there is spirituality, because there is a higher force that has created all this dance that has given us this world. And if we were just to keenly observe and see and be like the children who learn we would learn what our life is all about. That similarity between science and spirituality is something that we all observe on a daily basis, but we choose to ignore. The third similarity between science and spirituality is the concept of oneness, is the concept of universality. Whenever science comes at a new discovery, that discovery is for everyone. It does not discriminate between race, between color, between gender. Today, you and I are connecting using the marvel of technology and that technology doesn't discriminate. Of course, there may be people who may want to profit and create certain unfair benefits out of it, but the science in itself is really non-discriminatory. You can use it. I can use it and unleash its potential. Spirituality is the same, the principle of spirituality, the principle of finding that higher power, that divine soul within ourselves, within the people who we are, doesn't discriminate. It doesn't discriminate between a man or a woman, between a child or an old person. It's available to all. That discovery is available to all. That, that happiness is available to all. And there is no no differentiation. If you look at science, when the vaccines were created, when the, when the vaccines were rolled out, they were made so that people who have even chronic illnesses could take it. 
that's the marvel of science it has universality when we talk about e is equal to mc square when we talk about quantum mechanics we look at their applications and we look at the universality of these applications the same scientific formula really permeates the whole world and the whole universe and it comes at advantage or sometimes unfortunately the destruction and disadvantage to all and that's what spirituality also does the spirituality the force of spirituality unifies you and me it tells us that we are all similar it tells us that our grief is same when i lose someone the pain that i feel is the same pain that you feel when you lose someone when your dream dies down the pain that you feel i feel the same pain when you achieve something in life and i achieve something the happiness is the same there are very very few differences it's almost like the world may look so different the sun may look different the earth may look different but when we observe at the elementary level they are all made of the same star dust it's the same universal cosmos that connects it all spirituality tells us that it tells us that you and i are no different that the differences that we see are so external are so superficial everything that who you and i are are similar and it's not just the human race it we are similar to other races as well whether it's an animal look at a bird it loves its own kin the same way as we would do to our kids it feeds its child the way we do it protects its children the way we do so there is an universality and science and spirituality both bring that spirituality doesn't divide us in different religions it unites us as a single force of humanity and that's really how science and spirituality are so similar the next o that really unmystifies or demystifies science and spirituality is the fact that you have to be open to explore for both you have to be open to surrender any scientist will tell you when you ask him or her do you know everything and they will say i know nothing i am a keen observer i'm open to surrender to what i learn and i learn and i test and i experiment and i grow the fact that i do know is the only fact that i know and that same principle applies to spirituality that i don't know any more than you know that you are an explorer in this as am i and the ex exploration the openness to surrender the openness to agree that i may not know where i am coming from that i may not know where my journey lies ahead but i'm willing to surrender that i'm willing to learn that i'm willing to grow that i'm willing to leave behind my guilts and my sorrows and my pains and my fear to know why i exist today to why i am in front of you today to why we are having this interaction that's what spirituality also unravels and speaks about the openness to surrender spirituality is based on the premise that i know nothing more than you know but if we join hands together with the same intention that we will want to know what our purpose for life is that we want to surrender and we want to do good and we want to unleash our complete potential to be the best possible human race you know really inhabiting earth or maybe mars some day as elon musk says we would do that and that openness to surrender is what is the common dot between science and spirituality another commonness and which is so important for science as well as spirituality is one catalyst an acceleration so anyone who studied science knows that there is a catalyst that really speeds up the process of doing something there's a catalytic reaction that makes a certain experiment successful or sometimes blow it apart but most of the times make it successful a catalyst helps you come up with new technologies artificial intelligence though was you know the term was coined in 1960s the advent of data and big data and internet and so much of data has really allowed and become a catalyst 
to unleash the power of artificial intelligence where a computer may just really work like a human being does and may show signs of emotive experience too because internet and data was the catalyst spirituality is the same you can accelerate your journey to finding the higher purpose you can accelerate your journey to understand the similarities between you and i and ignore the differences you and i can catalyze our experiences to be happy to be present no matter what happens to leave our fear behind and be in the moment and really bask ourselves in the glory of today if we have an accelerator and a catalyst that we in india call as guru as a spiritual master so the master allows i mean it's not like you can't discover the journey of spirituality and of finding the meaning of life on your own of course that's the whole premise of spirituality that there are many ways to find it but the master enables and becomes the catalyst so there is a similarity between how science and spirituality really are intertwined in the sense to really have the full potential of science unleash you need catalysts you need acceleration similarly for spirituality your journey to get past the differences your journey to get past the jealousies of being a human the limitations of looking beyond the life today all of this happen these uh, these curtains as they might really hamper your vision may all go away if you have a catalyst a spiritual master science and spirituality is what excites me i believe that i owe my life to the fact that i understand the spiritual side of me and i owe my life to science because everything that i'm able to do today with my career and everything that i will be able to do in the life that lies ahead of me is all a marvel of science so science and spirituality together make the combination that can unleash the human potential to its fullest we have to be happy being spirituality enables us to do that we have to observe this world with a keen eye with no differences but with similarities spirituality enables us to do that we have to look at the common origin between you and i look past the differences of race of color of gender of religion high time we fought so many wars enough is enough and that's the sponsors of the today's show the name is manav dharm high time we find the manav that connects us high time we look beyond these really un uh, unsettling barriers that we have created as humanity and unleash and let science flow and let spirituality flow i'm so glad that i got the opportunity to connect with all of you today i'm really looking forward to listening to mahatma vyoma baiji and to her delightful words as i am a fan of you know her knowledge and uh, i will love to answer any questions that you may have my very warm greetings and to our science and spiritual world may we stay connected and may we stay spiritual thank you thank you so much ms shipra dawar for your kind words like you said spirituality is more about what's the true purpose of life and science is what makes it a reality you explained it so perfectly how these two are intertwined with each other the four o's which you said the origin observation openness and one catalyst like you said we can be manifested into superhumans only if we realize that we originated from the same speck of energy you also explained that both science and spirituality is available to all and is universal to all this force of spirituality basically unifies all of us the difference we see among ourselves are so external but deep within we're all so alike therefore i personally could conclude that knowing our origin which is the same speck of energy being observant of little things around me and being open to surrendering myself to know more and to find answers to my questions and to find one catalyst that we call guru who can guide us on our way of life is what would unleash our true potential thank you so very much also a quick reminder the chat box is open for your questions to our speakers ms shipra dawar on this topic science and spirituality moving forward now we wish to present to you our special guest speaker of the day mahatma vyoma bai ji mahatma vyoma bai ji is a realized soul from haridwar india 
Mahatma Vyoma Baiji is a disciple of Sri Sadpal Ji Maharaj. She has been spreading the message of spirituality and peace to humanity for the last 20 years in service of Guru Maharaj Ji through the Manav Dharam, Manav Uthan Seva Samiti, which is a social spiritual organization. Mahatma Vyoma Baiji, through her, spiritual, through her spiritual discourses, has been spreading the spiritual awakening message in various parts of India, mainly Himalayan state of Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Nepal, Bihar, South India and Delhi and has come today to share with us her experience and deeper understanding of science and spirituality. It is a great honor to be in the presence of Mahatma Vyoma Baiji today as Mahatma, Mahatma Vyoma Baiji will share with us her own personal spiritual understanding and experiences on this topic, science and spirituality. Without further ado, here now Mahatma Vyoma Baiji. My heartiest greetings uh, everyone here and thank you Supriya ji for my introduction. And we have all gathered here on this platform of spiritual awareness journey uh, to discuss various topics on spirituality and uh, other topics also. So today's topic is science and spirituality. We were just listening to a wonderful satsang, a speech by Shipraji. And uh, today the topic is very interesting because today we will see what is the relation between science and spirituality, whether science and spirituality oppose each other or can go hand in hand. So there are many misconceptions about uh, spirituality. And those people who are uh, modern and have a scientific bent of mind usually seem to oppose spirituality. And they look down upon spirituality. But today we will see how we are going to reach to spirituality through a journey, our uh, centuries old journey of science we will first see. And then how we can reach to our goal of that super conscious state through spirituality. So the definition of science is a science is a systematic study or systematic observation. And it's a actually science is a systematic study of physical phenomena, physical world and its phenomena. And based on unbiased observation and uh, systematic experimentation. So science is developed through different experiments carried out by scientists since last few centuries. The first one to name from name a few, the first one is Galileo, who first invented the first uh, telescope. Then Copernicus, a very important name in the field of astronomy. Johannes Kepler, who in before 14th century, he gave us the, he, he studied the mo movements of planets and their orbits. Such an important name in the science. So in the 14th century, Isaac Newton was born. And from 14th century, actually, the modern science was born because Isaac Newton was the founder of the modern science. He is called the father of modern science because he discovered an important law of gravity. And then he discovered the law of motion, which can be applied to all material particles in the world, all material uh, things in the world. So he gave us very famous, the law of motion, the law of inertia and the law of action and reaction. So we study in school all these laws, the laws of the law of gravity. He gave us the equation of force. He said force is equal to mass into acceleration. So these were the inventions by Isaac Newton that created a launch pad for modern science. He, he was also co-founder of calculus, 
the mathematical base for all the calculations in the science so we can say the modern science was born in 14th century uh, and in 14th in 17th century sorry i was uh, wrong it was in 17th century isaac newton gave all us all these equa all these uh, theories and uh, theory of gravity also so 17th century science was born and when it was 18th century a uh, basic uh, development in biology and chemistry happened in 18th century and when 19th century came there was important names we saw very famous and important names like john dalton who gave us the atomic model of uh, atom he first atomic model was given by john dalton and then other scientists like maxwell faraday who gave us the who invented electricity and magnetism then there were other scientists niels bohr and many other charles darwin charles darwin gave us the theory of evolution of mankind so the main goal of scientists today is to find how creation came into existence and how human being came into being so this is the goal of scientists today so accordingly there were researches in the field of atom subatomic particle and then came important name in the field of science is einstein he gave us the definition of space time and gravity so the human conception of space time and gravity was changed by his equation of energy e is equal to mc squared so einstein is an important name who gave a new direction to science and a new thought to science and before that the science was depended entirely on New newtonian material universe as the basis of a modern existence of, of our physical existence so newton's material newtonian uh, the theories that founded by newton which can explain the movement of material and particles and the mechanics so everybody thought that the universe these are the basic founding theories of for the universe that material universe but then when einstein came he changed all the concept of the newtonian mechanics and he changed the whole uh, picture with the with his theories and he gave us the energy mass equation and he researched in fo about photons and he got nobel prize for his research on the uh, photon his research on photon as movement and his uh, research on photoelectric effect so for the first time einstein said that light which is coming from suppose sun is not actually only wave light consists of packet packets of photons packets of wave packets and that are called photons so that theory explained the photoelectric effect which we use in our solar uh, uh, solar energy which is an important effect in solar energy so after einstein then there was major inventions and discoveries and studies and researches in the field of quantum physics so now we can see the journey of science from the first telescope microscope in 17th century when we began to see the minutest and smallest particle of the element then came the various discoveries in biology and chemistry that uh, set a foundation stone for modern Uh, industrialization and because of the discoveries in biology in, in 18th century we were able to cure the pandemics like plague and uh, chicken pox and then ahead when we went ahead in the 19th century 
we got scientists like dalton nils bohar and uh, schrodinger and all these great names and they threw light on the minute nature of the particle and substance and elements and einstein changed the concept of space time and gravity and einstein said that gravity what is gravity so gravity is so funny thing scientists say that gravity is such a mysterious force that it can bind all the planets and uh, stars all together in a solar system it is they are bounded together because of the gravitational force of the sun and moon is revolving because of the gravitational force of the force of the earth this gravitational force is so powerful which is binding all the planets but when we go to sub atomic level and small particles they say that they don't see any they don't see any gravitational force on a sub atomic level on the level of atoms and electrons and sub atomic particles so where did the gravitational force suddenly disappears when it comes to sub atomic particles and now we are studying quantum physics there is a double slit experiment by thomas young which is very famous experiment in which it is shown that a particle show sh is showing a particle and wave duality so the sub atomic particles that is electrons protons neutrons and other smaller particles they show wave and uh, particle dual wave and matter duality that means in that experiment it was observed that when a single electrons electron was bombarded on a double slit uh, cardboard where there was double slit when uh, a stream of electron was bombarded on the other side of the board was a plate photoelectric plate uh, photographic plate where they found that the there they found a spectrum a spectrum of light we showed that these particle are acting as a waves and then interfering with each other and forming a spectrum of light on the opposite board opposite but uh, when they bombarded a single particle only single particle at a time what to their surprise they found that a, a single particle bombarded on a board of a double slit still they found the spectrum now this was very puzzling uh, puzzling to scientists why because the single particle how can a single particle can interfere with himself so when they were puzzled so they put an observer observing machine to observe how the particle is forming a interference pattern but to their surprise when they put the machine to observe what happens what is happening there inside suddenly the particle stop showing the interface pattern and and the single uh, line was there only single line of a light was there so that means there was no interference so this puzzled scientist and now they knew that inside small atom the energies that are working inside an atom are mysterious energies and a particle a small subatomic particle behaves as a matter and sometimes it behaves as a wave so what are these mysterious energies controlling the movement of particles quantum physics is studying and researching in this field but still not getting any answer so the mysterious energies that are the reason for the small particles and because of which the whole universe is created so when scientists observe this effect they said that this is very mysterious and we can find no answer to this and then sir james jeans a famous physicist said that now it looks like as if the universe is the no stream of knowledge 
is uh, flowing towards a non mechanical reality and it is more mental and it is spiritual because what they observe that the small the subatomic energies these energies are not only uh, interact with uh, observer but also observer can change the pattern of the energies so this is called observer effect so when we come to science today this modern science the mo modern science is standing on a on a such a threshold that he the science cannot explain any more than the energies and science is not able to explain anything about the subatomic energies but when uh, we and now here comes the spirituality in spirituality spirituality is always talking about energies since ancient times since ancient times spirituality is talking about atma spirit pran human consciousness the effect of our consciousness uh, on nature and other elements so to explain these energies we must go to adopt spirituality only then we will be able to explain all the phenomena that science cannot explain so spirituality is and now scientists are experimenting and researching in the field of mind and matter and consciousness so the latest researches are going on in the field of consciousness and matter and what first people thought that mind was that accidental intruder in the realm of matter but now what they to their surprise they are finding that mind actually can change the material and mind can change the physical uh, inside of a matter so mind is not merely an intruder but actually the creator and governor of the energies within the matter so for example there is an uh, experiment by masaru uh, masaru onata of japan in his uh, very best selling book called the hidden messages in water so this experiment shows us that our intention mood positive thinking can affect the molecular structure of water and it can change the molecular structure of water so what is found out that uh, when three glasses of water were chosen and kept on a table and when one glass was uh, kept and then some positive thoughts and uh, intentions and positive mood and somebody singing positive positively talking positively then what they found out that the crystal structure of the water when it they freeze the water and they found out the crystal structure a very beautiful crystal structure was came out uh, in the microscope and another glass was kept where some abusive words were negative thoughts were expressed and angry some people talking angrily and they uh, check the effect of uh, all the talking and intentions and negative thoughts on the water they put the water in the fridge to turn into ice and when they with the help of a microscope when they check the water what they found out what that the crystal structure was very distorted and ugly so this proved that uh, if our mood and intentions is positive then it can change the molecular structure of elements of nature so this was an important experiment so that's why we will have to turn to spirituality to change the world because in spirituality it is our seers and philosophers always talk about uh, positive feelings meditation and they said that uh, actually the real 
super natural energy that exists and that's created and sustaining the whole universe is the energy of god and god is the greatest uh, metaphysician in the world which is the creative force in the world and which is always protecting and loving all human beings so on the level of energies now spirituality can explain the real supernatural energy which is god and which is the creator and only through spirituality we can find answer to many questions that science is not yet able to find the questions like why we see dreams the paranormal activities that happen many times observe in cctv footages we see ghost like figures and many paranormal paranormal activities recorded we science cannot explain them science cannot explain science have learned a lot about brain and its activities but still science have no answer why we dream and why we sleep and when we die what happens to the consciousness or the energy that why all of a sudden everything stops when we die why all functions of body we cannot revive those functions with all the modern scientific equipments this is still a big question only spirituality can answer these questions why we dream and what are the paranormal activities and uh, what happens after we die so spirituality is very important topic but those people who believe in science say that all people talking about religion and spirituality are backward people so this is their misconception we have to change that misconception about spirituality because spirituality is the super science only through this super science we can get answer to all the unanswered question of this creation and the nature and many animals we have so mysteriously science is not able to answer their answer why they behave like that spirituality can answer that because when we are spiritual and when that loving force of god we have when we connect with that loving uh, force of god through meditation and we and when we uh, link ourselves with that supernatural force that we call prana or spirit then all the knowledge all the energy all the happiness and bliss flows through us when the link is established through meditation with that invisible force and that meditative state we can get answer for all the puzzles in the world so that's why we must uh, meditate we must turn to spirituality spirituality uh, when science stops spirituality starts so in this uh, age now quantum mechanics have really proved that beyond the mechanical universe beyond the particles and materials there are energies and these energies cannot be explained by science and these energies can be explained by spirituality only so just like we were listening to shri praji when she said that only spiritual master can direct us can guide us so spiritual master is actually the controller and governor of these energies whether it is material or spiritual or every all the energies so when we go to a spiritual master and when we obey his orders and according to his instructions when we meditate and when we meditate and establish a link between our soul or spirit or that energy which is the driving force our uh, of our life and which is the creative intelligence which has given us the gift of life so when we establish a link with that force that inner force then we get answer to all the questions and when that link is established all our problems mental problems uh, a religious book uh, epic ramayana there is a very important uh, verse that says that when you are connected with that supernatural energy which is driving force of your body 
when you connect to that energy then all your uh, mental problems anxiety depression and anger frustration and jealousy all this the mental uh, vices or problems are eradicated when we establish this link when we meditate when we go deep into meditation then all these problems are solved all our other problems and issues are also find answers when we are deep in meditation because when we are deep in meditation we are directly in connection with the universal energies the universe so the universe gives us all the answers through this link and we feel blissful and happy so i would like to conclude my speech uh, with only one request that we must uh, give up the misconception and uh, and now believe that the universe is not mechanical but spiritual and mental so the whole creation is spiritual the whole uh, the stream of knowledge is going towards a non mechanical reality and the universe uh, is behaving more the universe is looking more like a thought than a great machine so before 17th century we thought that the universe is mechanical but now the scientists say the universe is like a thought of some supernatural energy and from his thought and cre the creation came into existence so all this question how the creation came into existence and how human beings developed and the darwin's theory says that humans developed from fish and then and the uh, one by one develop into monkeys and then from monkeys we become human beings but uh, spirituality says that human being was already a uh, created in the mind of god and god need no evolution to help him to develop human beings god already has designed the uh, blueprint of a human being so on this spirituality can throw light on such deep mysterious subject uh, so we must uh, turn to spirituality we must go to a spiritual master and learn meditation and practice meditation and make our life more blissful and happy thank you very much for listening thank you so much mahatma vyoma bai ji for your words of wisdom like you said science is developed through different experiments carried out since past few centuries you also talked about great scientists like copernicus galileo einstein newton and many more you explained the entire evolution of science modern science and also biology the subatomic particles show dual property of a wave and a particle once during the experiment it was found that they were bombarding with each other and forming a spectrum of light since ancient times spirituality has always been talking about energies mind is actually the creator and the governor of the matter Masaru in his best selling book The Hidden Message in a Water was also able to prove that the thoughts our intentions basically the state of the mind can actually shape change the shape of the molecule of the water on the energy level spirituality can solve so many questions which are yet to be proven by experiments in science spirituality is the super science therefore when we are spiritual and are connected with the loving force of core god during meditation then all the knowledge happiness and bliss force flows through us and can get and then we can get answers to all our puzzles therefore beyond mechanical particles there are energies which are yet to be explained by science but can be easily understood through spirituality thank you so much for joining us today bai ji now as we have some time left and also that the chat box is open for questions on science and spirituality from the audience for our speakers I would like to address these questions received via email to Mahatma Vyoma Bai ji. Bai ji, first question: We often hear that where science ends, spirituality starts. So, does mysticism have like a scientific basis? No, actually, the answer is no, uh, because mysticism is uh, completely metaphysical uh, thing, and uh, science. the science have limits just uh, now i have explained 
science cannot explain beyond a limit and when it comes to energies and uh, mysticism mysticism is completely about uh, the spirituality and the supernatural exper experiences so these experiences science cannot explain so uh, science can only make our life uh, struggle free convenient and uh, all the con uh, convenience of life we, we can get from science but to mystical queries and mystical experiences science have no answer so we must purely rely on uh, a spiritual ma uh, master or a saints and scripture uh, the mysticism thank you so much and moving ahead uh, shukra ji so there's this question on our chat box so one asks that as a student how do we connect we how to stay connected with spirituality through studies with studies so thank you for the question i think the question is asking how does one while studying also stay connected to spirituality and why should one do that it is super important because when you are studying uh, the first thing that happens to a person who's studying that there is a stress load on performance of you know you need to cram something as though you don't know spirituality starts from the premise that i am that i know and i can know so when you are blending spirituality in the way you study you are already believing that you can learn and you can expand another thing that happens when you're studying with a mindset of spirituality is that you learn to grow is that you learn to benefit the world if you look at newton's life or if you look at einstein's life specifically for newton it has been said time and time over again that he was a deeply religious or a spiritual man and he always wanted to do larger good that creates an impact not just where he was staying or living but for the larger world so as a child if you are rooted in spirituality you are rooted in the need to know more to do more but you're also rooted in being present and being not worried of one failure or one success because it's important as soon as you realize your spiritual power you know that sky and the eternal is your limit and that helps in going past the difficulties that a student might face from time to time and uh, really look beyond like baiji was also saying about the mental struggles of you know the failures and success that a human beings goes through okay thank you so much shipra ji so one more question like adding to the previous one so is it possible to achieve spirituality to the fullest living in materialist world i mean like not by being saint but as a common man absolutely it is possible and that is why it's important to have a catalyst or a spiritual master by your side and that just helps speed up the process i mean if you look at the material world the sun doesn't stop shining and doesn't stop giving us the energy it's doing its karma your karma or your 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 work is something that you do to live but your soul needs to be enriched by the love for the god because tomorrow we may cease to exist today i am in this form we may still exist and that's the learning that you get only with spirituality that i exist i only cease to exist in my present form and that takes away the fear so while doing your daily routines your daily chores it's absolutely possible to unleash the full potential of spirituality on the contrary i would say your daily life will become more blissful if you hold the hands of a spiritual master or have time set aside for discovering your spiritual side as well because all of this then comes very naturally to you so the saints are doing us a great service by dedicating their life to us and to making our lives better but it is absolutely possible to fully unleash and understand your spiritual being by doing what you are doing and take that spirituality and actually do even greater good in terms of your inventions in terms of your work in terms of raising a great family as well thank you so much shipra ji now moving ahead bhai ji there is one question asked by shanti so when you speak about god what do you mean with that and what is the way that we can connect to god yes the answer is when we uh, talk about god just now i have uh, explained uh, in this uh, speech today that god is a driving force or energy 
इन अवर बॉडी विच वी कॉल्ड प्राणा और आत्मा और सोल और स्पिरिट सो स्पिरिट और सोल और आत्मा और दैट ड्राइविंग सुपर नेचुरल एनर्जी ड्राइविंग फोर्स ऑफ अवर बॉडी दैट इज वाई वी आर लिविंग बींग्स दैट एनर्जी ऑन इज इन ऑन इन इट्स फुल लेवल दैट मीन इट इज ओनली द फ्रैक्शन ऑफ दैट एनर्जी इज कॉल्ड स्पिरिट बट when we connect uh, uh, with that energy as a whole as a universal energy that energy is also filled up in omnipresent and omniscient and omnipotent which is everywhere and even the universe is created because of this energy so this energy is is the driving force of our body and when it is driving our body we call it uh, prana or soul and when this energy is driving the universe or uh, is the reason behind the creation then we call this energy as god so god and spirit or prana or one, one and the same thing uh, it's like uh, god is ocean and our spirit or prana is like a drop drop of water so uh, when we say god we are referring to this universal powerful creative intelligent force so this force is god some people call him krishna some people call call may call him jesus some people according to their beliefs and religion call uh, them different names like muhammad or buddha but it is the one and the same energy and when we realize this energy through rigorous practice of meditation and uh, by the grace of spiritual master by the direction of spiritual master when we go deep in meditation and meditate for a long time for many days and when then we can experience this supernatural force within us and we can find answer to all the question in our life and in the society also and all the questions are solved so the the answer is we must uh, connect with this energy through meditation and we must learn the techniques of meditation as taught by uh, spiritual master so we must first find a true spiritual master that is really will give answer to all the solve all all our problems Thank you so much, Baiji and Shipraji, for your insightful and thoughtful answers. We have now reached the end of our program, and we wish to thank you for your questions. Our heartiest thank you to Miss Shipra Dawarji and Mahatma Vyoma Baiji for their time shared here with us and for their insightful answers. You can always reach them by sending us an email at spiritualawarenessjourney at the gmail dot com with your other questions. We wish to thank our speakers, our special guest Mahatma Vyoma Baiji and Ms. Shipra Dawarji for such an insightful and informative program. I wish to thank each one of you for your presence here today on this spiritual talk platform. Our next spiritual awareness journey program will be held on Saturday, twenty third April, two thousand twenty two. Our twenty eighth episode will be on the topic spirituality and wellness, part two. All our spiritual awareness journeys, previous episodes of season one and two are now available on our Manav Tharam YouTube channel, where you can enjoy the many other spiritual topics, discussing the different spiritual aspects and practical applications of spirituality in our daily lives. You can also check out our first spirituality and wellness topic in our first season. Feel free to drop us a note with the comments, and if you have any other questions for our guest. Please email us at spiritualawarenessjourney at the gmail dot com. Check the email address in the chat box for your reference. Thank you all, especially our speakers, Miss Shipra Dawar and Mahatma Vyoma Baiji, for their wonderful sharing on this topic. Thank you all again for joining us today. This episode's video will be made available with subtitles on Manav Tharam YouTube channel very very soon, and feel free to post it on your social media page. And share it with everyone. Thank you to our sponsor, Manav Tharam YouTube channel. Wishing you a pleasant weekend. I am your host, Supriya Koirala, and from all of us on the spiritual awareness journey, wishing you a joyous day. Mark your cal- calendar for our next episode, twenty eighth, on twenty third of April, two thousand twenty two. 
topic spirituality and wellness our best wishes to you all thank you so much for joining us see you soon Thank you.